Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving average velocity. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says a plane flies 550 kilometers east of south from Glasgow to London. The trip takes one hour and 20 minutes. What is the average velocity of the plane in kilometers per hour? Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the average velocity V bar. We know the displacement S is 550 kilometers, and we'll just ignore the direction for now. And the time T is equal to one hour and 20 minutes. And we want to get the units into just one consistent unit. So because here we're thinking about kilometers and we want a value for average velocity in kilometers per hour, then we're gonna convert the time into just hours. And remember 20 minutes as a third of an hour. So we can rewrite this as a decimal as 1.33 hours. So writing down our equation for average velocity, we have S equals V bar times T. Rearranging for V bar, we can divide both sides by T to get V bar equals S over T. Substituting in the numbers gives us 550 divided by 1.33, and putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 414 kilometers per hour. But remember, average velocity is a vector, so we need to state our direction with our answer. And the direction was from the question east of south. Question two says a toddler crawls five meters north and then gets up, turns, and runs 12 meters east. It takes 30 seconds to complete this exercise. Find the total distance travelled first of all. Well remember to find total distance we just add up the distances. So we have total distance equals 5 plus 12 which equals 17 metres. Part B then says to find the displacement. Well remember we can use either the scale diagram method or the calculation method here. And I'm going to use the calculation method because it's a wee bit quicker. So let's draw a sketch of the situation. So we've got a vector going 5 metres north and let's call that side A. And then we've got a vector going 12 metres east and let's call that side B. We can then draw a line from our starting to our finishing point and that is the resultant vector going this way. And then we can label our unknown side C our right angle in there and our angle theta will be next to the starting point. To find the magnitude, we can then use Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and then plugging in the numbers, we get five squared plus 12 squared, which equals 169, which means our value for c will be the square root of 169, which is equal to 13 meters. Then to find the direction for the angle, first of all, we need to use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So opposite the angle is 12 and adjacent to the angle is five. So we have 12 divided by 5, which is equal to 2.4. We then find theta by doing inverse tan of 2.4, which is equal to 67 degrees. We can then write down our final statement, but remember we need to use this angle with either compass points or bearings. So we can say the resultant displacement is equal to 13 meters at 67 degrees east of north. And that comes because remember this is north and our resultant vector is towards east. So it's moved around 67 degrees away from north towards east. Or we could say 13 meters at a bearing of 067 because remember for bearings we go to the starting point i.e. 000 and we go round until we get to the resultant vector. So our bearing is simply going to be 067 in this case. Part C then says to find the average speed. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the average speed of V bar. We know the total distance traveled from part A is 17 meters, and the time in the question is 30 seconds. We then write down our equation, D equals V bar T, and we can rearrange for V bar by dividing both sides by T. So we get V bar equals D over T. Substituting in the numbers gives us 17 divided by 30, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 0.6 meters per second for average speed. Lastly, for part D, it says to find the average velocity. So this time we're gonna use our answer to part B rather than the total distance 17 meters. So we can write down what we know from the question, which is we're trying to find V bar average velocity this time. We know that displacement S is equal to 13 meters, and we'll just drop the direction for now, but we'll remember to include it later in our answer and the time t is equal to 30 seconds, just like in part c. We can then write down our equation for average velocity, s equals v bar times t. Rearranging for v bar, we divide both sides by t to get v bar equals s over t. Substituting in the numbers gives us 13 divided by 30, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 0.4 meters per second. However, because it's a vector, remember we need our direction. So we need to state our direction, which is the same directions from part B. So you could say 0.4 meters per second at 67 degrees east of north, or 0.4 meters per second at a bearing of 067. Lastly, question three says, Mr. Mitchell decides to take his new running creps, i.e. trainers, out for a spin. He runs at an average speed of five meters per second. 
He travels 4 kilometers south and then 5 kilometers west. Find in part A is distance traveled. Well remember to do this we just need to add up the distances in the questions so our total distance is equal to 4 plus 5 which equals 9 kilometers. Then to find the displacement we can either use the scale diagram or the calculation method and again just like in question 2 I'm going to use the calculation method. So let's start with a sketch. We've got our velocity vector going south 4 kilometers, and we can label that side A and then we've got our second vector going west and that is side B which is 5 kilometers. And then we can draw a resultant vector going from the start to the finish point, give that a double arrow to make it different to the individual vectors and label it side C. We can then label our right angle in there and our angle theta next to the starting point. To find the magnitude, remember we use Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and we can plug in the numbers. So we'll get 4 squared plus 5 squared, which equals 41. That means side c will be the square root of 41, which equals 6.4 kilometers. Remembering we're in kilometers here and not meters. To find the angle for the direction, first of all, we use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And opposite the angle here, we have 5. And adjacent to the angle, we have 4. So we've got 5 divided by 4, which is 1.25. We can then take the inverse of tan of 1.25 to find theta, and that gives us 51 degrees. We can then write down our final statement, writing the angle as either compass points or bearings. So we've got resultant displacement is equal to 6.4 kilometers at 51 degrees west of south. So how do we get that? Well, remember here we've got south, the resultant vector is 51 degrees towards west away from that. So we've got 51 degrees west of south. Or as a bearing, we have 6.4 kilometers at 231. Now to find the bearing, remember we go to the starting point and we think about north as being 0, 0, 0, and we want to go round from north all the way around to the resultant vector. So that's going to be 180 round to south plus the angle of 51 degrees. So 180 plus 51 it gives us 231 for the bearing. Part C then says to find the time taken for the run. We're trying to find the time t here. We know the total distance travelled was 9 kilometres, which is the same as 9 times 10 to the 3 metres or 9,000 metres, and the average speed we're told in the question is 5 metres per second. So writing down our equation for average speed, we have d equals v bar t. Rearranging for the time t, we can divide both sides by v bar to get t equals d over v bar. Substituting in the numbers gives us 9 times 10 to the 3 divided by 5, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.8 times 10 to the 3 seconds. Lastly, part D says to find as average velocity. Well, remember to find average velocity, we need displacement S, which we just calculated in part B. So to write down what we know from the question, we're trying to find V bar, the average velocity. We know that the displacement S is 6.4 kilometers, and just like before, we'll ignore the direction just now, but we'll remember to include it in the final answer. And so this is the same as 6.4 times 10 to the 3 meters, and the time is 1.8 times 10 to the 3 seconds, which we just calculated in part C. We can then write down the equation for average velocity, which is S equals V bar times T. Rearranging for V bar, we divide both sides by T to get V bar equals S over T. Substituting in the numbers gives us 6.4 times 10 to the 3 over 1.8 times 10 to the 3. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 3.6 meters per second. Now remember we said we would include our direction at the end because velocity is a vector. So we've got 3.6 meters per second at 51 degrees west of south or 3.6 meters per second at a bearing of 231. And remember those directions came from our answer in part B. And you can choose whichever one of these you prefer to write down. That's all for this video folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.